Alright, here we go. This is Marz versus Schmulzi. It's the Chaos Pit side event. 1400 max ELO. And uh, it's all Chaos Pit. Just one map. And uh, complete and utter chaos. At least let's hope so. The semi final. So, a Persian douche among other things. So, uh, anything can happen. But it is Chaos Pit. You don't have gold in this pit. You have to get chopped through the woodlines to get to the gold spots outside, which will be in either side here usually. So usually you'll see the players go to the edge and uh, drop through, and then hopefully they'll have a rather short walking distance to the gold. Five relics in the middle, certainly, but they're going to benefit the Aztecs here for the uh, long game. Aztecs definitely want to contest the relics because they get 33% more gold. From them, but that's a castle thing you need to get there first. Now, why Aztecs for Chaos Pit? Uh, it's because there's no gold in the middle, since so Aztecs starting with 50 extra gold means that they will be able to go, for example, Bennett Arps uh, without even if there's no gold access, because you you will be able to afford three militia and Bennett Arms with your starting gold. So, well, could be the play here, Bennett Arms Towers, but if Schmultzi sees right through that, could counter that with some. Nice and early Mongols scouts, maybe. There's uh, one extra deer here, so there's a total of 700 food from deer for the Mongols to collect with their 40% faster collection. And uh, yeah, and that basically is enough to get up to the next stage. And then you have the, the water buffaloes and the double berry bushes, which they both get as well. So there's no gold in the pit, but there's stones to collect. So two stones per player. Incredibly lucky uh, berry generation here for Marts as well. You could actually place a, a mill right in the middle of these two berries and uh, have it semi efficient, even if it means uh, a little bit further walking distance to the edges here. So you'll notice the players are pushing in the deer because they don't want to make more than one mill, right? So, um, at least not initially. So they're pushing in the deer close to TC2. Maximize villager working efficiency, not needing to walk nearly as far. And this, it's the natural barriers uh, making the luring a bit awkward here, but it seems to be okay ish for Mats here. Schmutzi now moving forward, got that Mongol scouting bonus as well, which is uh, maybe underrated for Chaos Pit actually, because that extra line of sight on your starting scout means that you'll be able to uh, scout a few tiles beyond the woodlands. You could actually get lucky, uh, lucky and find these close tiles of gold. Maybe uh, maybe Schmultz even did that. Ah, okay, so it's just not enough, I guess. But, uh, oh, he's gonna push the steal the deer. Nah. <laughs> so sometimes you see the players uh, steal, trying to steal the opponent's deer as well and push them all the way back to home base. That's one of my go-to plays for <laughs> for Zocotra. So uh, I've seen it on Chaos Pit as well. Only two on wood here for Schmolzi, but then again you only need to chop through single trees here to get through. So even if you have two of them, that's fine. Marts has had four for a while already and... Uh, Keeps two villagers and one tree here, as you can see, because uh, you want to chop it down as quickly as possible so you can get to the gold. Good evening, Marts. Schmulzi, two villagers dropping the barracks a little bit late, but it's with two villagers, so it might just make it in time here. Smells like scouts to me. Here's the small walls on the woodland as well. Good preemptive uh, uh, walls here to um, to keep the um, men at arms and towers out. Months. 
Yeah, there's that multi-purpose mill there, right in between the various map hacks here from that, getting a real nice food output from the mills, and also those small walls here. However, not really protected from towers here. I mean, one tower here from the Mongols, and your woodland is subject to our fire. Let's see here, village is in, the mm, stable is going up, while Martz is... probably has dropped the barracks. It's on the woodland, actually. Which is interesting if you want to go aggressive with the Venant Arms. That's, I mean, it's kind of hiding away the fact that you have a barracks here. So that could be could be partial mind games here. I'm just casually checking and finding a hole here as well. <laughs> nice. So it's gonna be the scouts for the Mongols here. Three scouts out already, something that Marts will notice one way or the other here. Spots one doesn't get says a free hit in as well, while doubling up on the farms and only going for spear defense here. So uh, while I speculated in the Venetar's Towers, that doesn't seem to be the case for Marts here. It's 23 villagers just extending that farm economy and might be thinking about selling stone to go cast later or just break through get the gold and go to cast age at a fairly healthy villager pop and uh, and um, good economy here the scouts won't be doing too much with the spearman investment which is not a huge one aztecs to get them out a little bit quicker as well since the all the military buildings of the aztecs work more quickly as a uh, civilization bonus Gultzi stops at three scouts, good call there, seeing the spearmen, seeing the walls, won't be doing too much, but uh, still arguably claims some map control with the mobility of the scouts, and will be moving about to just, yeah, keep them scouting the map for what's going on. Wants to go drush, drush, but against Mongol scouts, that's complicated. Yeah, Mongols can be up so early, you see the uptime here as well, that the... Schmutz is up at 8.11, you just don't don't go out with uh, militia against that into men arms Even 21 pop men arms here from the F6 would be way slower than the uh, Mongol scouts. That said though, March has a significantly lower idle TC time and indirectly gets an uh, eco uh, lead as a result. It's uh, about three, three and a half villagers lead from Barts here, and we see that the economy getting dangerously close to the next uh, next age click as well. Oh, oh, careful with your scouts, could get trapped here. But this is Marts and not the Viper, so it's uh, probably going to be fine. Everybody makes traps nowadays, even 900 ELO players trap units if they get the chance. So I should be careful what I say. Down goes the Eagle Scout. Uh, uh, seems a greedy approach by the Aztecs here, but now selling stone and wood, keeping stone for another potential TC in the back here as well. There are some some uh, nice spots to cover for that. So the castle should be on the way any moment. Just needs that second building. So the blacksmith, blacksmith, a little bit delayed, might have been uh, lacking wood for that with uh, with the amount of lumberjacks and the spearmen investment or whatnot. But uh, the fact remains, Marz is going to reach the cast age significantly quicker than Schmolzi here. And, uh... Not sure what the follow-up would be, if it would be some kind of archer's play, archer's crossbow arbalest for the Aztecs against Mongols. Kind of makes sense if we see the Mongols' ranged initiatives here, like uh, cab archers or... Or... Mangodai, but, uh, since there's stone here, but uh, then again, you could also, with your earlier cast age, play the Eagle Warriors with success. The Palisade DAs are, are nothing special, and you see Shmulti possibly preparing a little bit for that as well, with the uh, stone walls to the side here, to uh, just in case any Eagles enter the field, they will need quite the while to break through the stone walls. 
Nice, checking the corner as well, always a good idea. Uh, this is open, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's open all the way here, but in this case it is. There's one tile open here, so if you're not, care not care careful, then the armies could path through the corner and find their way into your base beyond these walls. So a good little house wall there from Schulze to prevent entry from both angles here. And then you could expand later, of course, as the, as the game moves on. Oh, 30 seconds to go for the castle age here from Mars. And uh, see also uh, clicked up here with uh, 2 minutes 15 seconds to go. Good bit of, of opportunity here from Mars to go for some aggression. Honestly, monks comes to mind here as well. I mean, their uh, monk siege push here would. Probably take Schmutzi off the map here. The scouts are way over here, so you don't have any easy uh, potential to snipe the Aztec monks here, and they are not easily snipeable either when you have spearmen and the extra uh, hit points that the monks get from uh, each technology you research. Schmutzi with a random militia here, or angry housewife, as we all also call them on my channel, but. Uh, uh, that castle goes up close to the relics, just to make sure Schmutzi won't be able to contest any of them. Uh, probably a monastery going to go up quite close to the castle here and protect the relics from um, being uh, stolen. Man, the arms for Schmutzi. What, what is this? Is he going to fight Jaguar warriors with long swords, or I am now I'm confused. Why the Mongols men at arms and eventually long swords? Uh, he, th he thinks the eagles are coming. He's, he's playing. He's, he's expecting the eagles, but there's only one barracks here. That's a potential massive misplay here for Schmolzi to take into long swords already, because there aren't any any eagles in production at all. Uh, maybe a few now. Not a lot of them. I mean, I'm just looking at the amount of barracks here. It's going to... It's only one barracks, right? Uh, I can't tell if this is a legit eagle play or a uh, fake eagle play here at this point. <laughs> but yeah, okay, there are some eagles here on the long swords. But Schmolzi eventually gets to those. That is going to turn out okay. Mongols uh, fully upgraded champions as well. But of course, when Schmolzi goes for... Um, Goes for long swords, then uh, all uh, Mart uh, has to do is to make uh, Jaguar warriors from the castle. So, uh, feels like a solid one for the Aztecs here. The monks will probably start collecting the relics, giving them uh, a passive gold boost there as well. Scouts run in here, maybe hoping to snipe some monks, but uh, no, no such luck. Still, only one barracks producing these eagle warriors. I mean, they don't produce that quickly. It's a uh, it's a um, fascinating approach here, but it seems to be working for Marts. Also going to try and get Schmutzi housed here, and funnily enough, it's going to work. <laughs> that never works. In with relics, three relics for Marts here, about to become four and five, of course. Second TC now popping up on the stone as well, that gives me... The impression that Marts might be wanting to go for a second castle. It also protects some more wood income here and allows to extend the economy. Now, <laughs> just uh, poking at the production buildings here, whereas uh, Schmulzi will commit literally all of the economy in the middle here to get this castle up. And there aren't really enough eagles to stop that, so I think this castle goes up no problem for, uh, for Schmulzi, especially if, Mar if Marts doesn't react ASAP. No reaction. I did see a seed workshop going up, and it's going to go. It's it's going to be a kind of a monk siege eagle push here. What? What? Why allow this to? <laughs> oh. Well, the castle goes up. 
I guess Marz doesn't mind. It's uh, forcing a castle fairly early for the Mongols here, and it's not like you're going to mass ridiculous amounts of Magodai just yet. Long swords are out as well. That should keep the eagles uh, away here for now. So, uh, okay, I take it back. The long sword switch was, was a good one. As more barracks pop up here, but uh, Schmolzi has a response. So, so Marz uh, really needs to add some uh, Jaguar warriors here to to deal with the long swords. They also pop into the ramps here to try and deal with this castle, but that could get converted if the monks uh, get redemption here. There's one Jaguar out on the field as well. So Matt is reacting as should be here, getting Sanctity for the monks to get more hit points. Which in this case will give the monks 50 hit points because they get 5 hit points per technology resource as well. Let him finish the castle because I knew he was unable to do Magadai plus Longswords and then push on the right in Magno. Okay, fair enough. Could have still gotten a lot of uh, eco kills though, so it was a bit confusing. But now, looking at the stone in combat, uh, should be able to drop another castle to see. Does not know of the expansion to the side here, but that uh, could have been the castle spot, I guess. I'm not sure if you can place castle in these uh, hilly terrains. But another castle goes up. Oh, a jolly mix. This is beginning to resemble an uh, AI style army here with uh, eagle warriors, jaguar warriors, monks, spearmen, and scorpions and magnets and whatnot. As you can see, Schmultz's economy is on the low side here, has to commit to uh, a unit combination to deal with this, uh, Mangudai to deal with. Uh, Jaguars and uh, possibly siege weapons, but then there are the monks, and the monks could easily get conversions in on uh, both uh, Magadai and uh, those swords. Tanky Aztec monks already at 50 HP. As you get as you get more resources, it's going to be more uh, more uh, five hit points more per technology research as well. Interesting spot for a TC, but here it goes. It's going to allow for some farm space and prevent raids from this angle. There are some Magadai out that could get some uh, kills in on exposed economy here. So Schmultzi attempting the counter attack. I think that makes sense as well. Uh, but you obviously need to survive the aggression as well. Uh, but significantly ahead here, even with only two TCs, the production has been very consistent. 22 seconds of idle TC time um, uh, at minute 31 in the game, even with multiple town centers. But the uh, Aztec's economy is also pretty nice with their extra carry capacity kicking in from the very beginning of the game. These Magadha already killed five builders, though, and they are going to get more. Uh, and they're going to have to get a lot more to offset the eco difference here for now. So. Monks each, eagles push to the side here. As uh, Marz has relocated to the side for some parts around the TC here. Semi covered by Castle Pyre as well. But uh, Schmultzi is uh, basically pushed off the middle here now, except for the defensive castle. And uh, which means that Marz is also free to start engaging the area over here. And he has the siege weapons and the units already. Also, is being let in through the gate. That's going to be a nightmare to deal with these raids. Even if you have town centers to protect here, the eagles have decent pierce armor. They could camp underneath TCs for short periods of time. And that's a threat you need to deal with here. Even the Jaguar warrior made it in that slow ass dude with the high attack against the infantry. I think it's 10 bolts damage against the infantry or something. Mangolai are still doing work. Look at these guys. Kill count now at 8. And increasing. Great work on the counter attack by Schmutzi, but uh, home base not looking too pretty. 47 builders now to the 83 of the Aztecs. And Aztecs also with the military domination in March with twice the population of the blue player here. And that's the GG.
Aztecs proving strong on Chaos Pit for this one, but that's not to say uh, there's not comeback potential here. Let's uh, let's actually go in. Yeah, let's have a look at the statistics and then I'll have a look at the civilizations they've picked uh, before we move on to the next game. Nineteen on nine gas station, not bad at all. Uh, we'll need to sell stone to get that kind of uh, gas station time on Chaos Pit because it takes a while to get to the middle. Let me see if I can find the. Here we go. Yes, uh, I didn't give them a uh, best of five draft, so <laughs> here we go. Uh, Mongols, Franks, Celts, Humans, Berbers. For Mart. So Cavalry Heavy Sibs may be excluding the Celts here. Uh, whereas uh, Marts has the Magyars, Aztecs, Tatars, Khmer and Sicilians. Yeah, I know what Sicilians are going to do. They're going to do dungeons and or castles. Or just a, an Omega boom with their faster building TCs. Khmer could have some really smooth uptimes, not needing the buildings. Tatars, elevation advantage. Seems very strong on Chaos Pit with these elevations leading down to where your pit is and uh, Magyars just all lots of options with instant melee upgrades and whatnot. Cubans few late rams but you need gold for that so that kind of uh, eliminates that point but you could get uh, map presence on the um, beyond the woodlands with the uh, with the second TC and still play an extended few late with whatever unit of choice Franks, that's for the very bushes, I think, and the cavalry in general, and Celts for the wood, collecting bonus. I'm not entirely sure which uh, draft I prefer here, they both have good civilizations, but uh, Aztecs one of the top ones here, and I bet they banned <laughs> Poles, because, yeah, Poles getting gold from collecting stone is an obvious huge advantage for Chaos Pit. Let's see what game 2 rates. Kels versus Magyars, okay. Up we go then with Multi versus Marts here. The players start with six water buffalo for um, Chaos Pit. So that's a equivalent of eight sheep, I believe. So eight should be 800 food. Sorry, isn't that... Oh. What did I say? Six? 900 food, is it done? Three, six, yeah, 900 food. So 100 more food than cheap. Sorry about that. Barry's in a great spot here for Schmultzy now. That uh, just screams for a mill in between both of those. Whereas Marts with the Magyars has the Barry's on either side. Could... Isn't really an advantage here. You could easily be pushed off these barriers, so I guess I'll be going for the back ones first. Oh, Schmultzi out early here, actually scouting the open side, maybe hoping to find some stray water buffaloes or push in some enemy deer towards home base. But that's some precious uh, scout hit points lost already, which uh, will uh, leave Marts winning any scouts fight they run into here. Oh, but the buffaloes are exposed. This could be a buffalo kills. It could be actually worth uh, sacrificing the scout for, for Schmultzi. I'm going to dance back and forth here, and... I think he's trying to lure this scout in here to be able to kill the buffaloes. Like to have red convert the buffaloes. But this isn't really accomplishing too much for Schmultzi here. I don't think that lame is going to play out. No. Rip Schmultzi scout. A little bit too aggressive here. And that uh, doesn't really hurt Marx's economy at all. Preserves all the water buffalo. And uh, only exchanging a little bit of uh, scout micromanagement for that.
So the Celts I would expect to go through here a lot more quickly than their counterpart can be actually select multiple trees this way, hold on. 47. No, we can't. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, seems pretty similar for now, but Celts do collect wood 15% faster. So that's probably one of the main reasons for picking Celts for this map. Aside from the fact that they spawn rather close to each other as well. So Celts could easily pull off their faster firing siege for a Huang style push with some market assistance. You could just mine the stone and sell the stone for gold, uh, get to the gas lage, use the market and pump out your siege weapons to eat the opponent's TC, so to speak. Kinda feel like uh, Magyar scouts would be the play here. Magyar men at arms with Magyars is strong, strong as well, but uh, there won't be gold for that until you push through. And then again, why would you want to go men at arms against Celts that have faster moving men at arms? But neither of them can afford it, so that's probably not going to be the case. Yeah, and keeping the scout alive for pushing there is uh, certainly important for this map. There's not that much to scout. You know that your opponent is going to spawn fairly close in the middle to you, in between the relics. It's just a matter of finding the actual location. Uh, but you also want to scout where they are taking wood. If it's here, I mean, you could always go here as well if you're schmaltzy or, you know. So it's not any... It's not like uh, guaranteed that you go straight back to, to the back of the TC, even if that seems to be the norm here for Chaos Pit. Martz's turn to move out here and uh, locate the area of Schmutzia. So you've actually been over here as well, maybe thinking that that could be the location, but assuming Martz is going for a 20 pop scouts here, then of course it's important to keep the scout HP alive. How's that working out? Dancing away, dodging the TC fire pretty decently there. See forward with lots of builders here, and uh, one on stone is going to be more. And the barracks goes up as well, so it, I guess it could still be two militia and then some towers. Uh, but no, actually pulling the builders back home was that a misclick? What's the? Or is it just the fact that there's the lack of a scout to engage here? Fifty wood left on the trees in the back here. No, there's only nine left, so uh, Schmutzi about to break through there with the Celts, whereas uh, Mats has uh, one full tree left to drop here. Fuel Age is in for both players now. Schmutzi going for some spears, just fully expecting the uh, scouts on Mats, and correctly so. Uh, Mats with the fairly fast uptime here, revealing that the. Uh, That is very likely the scouts play. Oh, but the spearmen are, are out of position here. Um, thank you, Builder Pathing, for not finding the closest way to the TC. That's going to be one dead builder for sure. Nicely blocked there from Marts as well. Losing one scout in the process, but also killing one builder value for sure. Food count extending a little bit here is uh, very. Symmetrical farms here around the TC, expect, except the gap. But it's only a matter of efficiency. Heavy food investment here, but is going to play the extended fuel age and probably queue 
more scouts as we go here. So have a look here, it's only two scouts, so Mart's not investing heavily into the scouts after all, even with the food investment. Uh, does have gold access now, just needs to place the mining camp, so uh, could be a more of a faster approach towards the castle age and get to uh, get to the Magars Knights here instead, or even the Cavalry Archers. Cavalry Archers might even be stronger here with the range and, uh, and everything to, to sneak some damage from beyond the uh, woodlands and whatnot. Spearman defense certainly working out here for the Celts. The uh, Celts infantry moves 15% faster, so they have a little bit of an easier time keeping up with the scouts. Of course, the scouts are faster, and they should be. They are horsemen, but uh, but uh, still has an easier time keeping up, of course. More scouts in the queue, but also 21 on food here from Bart. The Meyer scouts are 15% cheaper or 10% cheaper or something. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's 15. And they are less of a drain on their food economy to uh, make for a smoother transition towards the castle age now. Some archers and spears moving forward here. No fletching yet for Schmulzi. Uh, but the spearman finds the berry pickers and will be joined by the archers soon enough here uh, which should lead much to just uh, pull the scouts back home and uh, clean this up focus the speedman first then get the archers then no problem the archers don't have fletching which means or it's on the way in but as soon as long as the archers don't have fletching it's even easier to take them out with your scouts one build you kill for Schmutzi as well though so um, evening out the situation here to a 1-1 one -one in the eco -KD department and scouts now pulling back home to clean up this little forward of the blue player investing into more archers here whereas Martz only misses the gold still didn't go to gold but uh, that's also a result of the scouts play that you want a nice and healthy farm economy before starting uh, the gold investment to move on to the next, next stage here come the scouts and the spearman is over here so the scouts should easily clean this up with that uh, plus one attack from forging for the um, Magyars, a little bit of help from the town center there as well, and Mart's now only missing gold, actually using the market. Selling some stone and food to go up here. Five on stone? Looks like Mart's wants to play a castle in the middle here again to secure the relics maybe, or maybe even offensively, depending on the uh, feudal investment of Schmulzi, who admittedly isn't anywhere near the castle age. Scouts still alive, so um, good scouts micromanagement here from uh, Martz, also managing to get 4 kills here as you can see, that's uh, uh, non-economy but killed those 4 archers earlier on. But now they should be going down to the spears here of course. What does it matter though, Schmolzi still didn't click up and Martz is now only 30 seconds away from the cast stage. Uh, yeah, I'm expecting a second stable to pop pop up here at some point oh not really lumber camp first but the uh, cavalry defense is coming in so it's uh, certainly going to be the cavalry cavalry play here and a little bit of market tweaking there to drop the second stable as well uh Bloodlines is in, so if uh, Schmulzi has been paying attention to the upgrades, he's seen the Bloodlines coming in for the scouts, that could still mean Cav Archers from the Magars, of course, but it's usually an indication that the scouts are going to be followed up by 
a knight's play. Here's the first one. Should probably be enough to clean up these uh, these little trickle of archers here since they don't have any spearman support. But um, ideally, you want maybe another knight just to clean up. The plus two defense isn't in quite yet. Schwartz needs to pass next to TC here to serve five, and oh, that's surprisingly little damage taken to the knight there. Great cleanup from Bats there, getting that one almost a little bit too, too inexpensive there. Don't barely taking any damage to that knight. Second barracks for Schwartz, so we're going to double up on the pikes here to hold off against the Vanguard's cavalry. Massing pikes early cancellation though is so costly. It's uh, it's the upgrade itself costs 215 food 90 gold and then you need the food and wood to mass the pikes as well and food and wood income seems on point though so I shouldn't completely discourage it but uh, keep in mind that the Magyar's knights also get already have uh, full upgrades with the attack and defense because of the instant melee upgrades granted to the Magyar's from reaching the next stage. Five knights out and about here, so Marz still lacking a few more gold to keep up here. Let's just have a quick look to see if Marz has gold mining on its in. So that should mean that uh, 10, 11 gold miners, 11 gold miners should be enough to uh, to sustain the double stables knights production here. 20 on food should also be okay. You need five on food to sustain constant uh, DC production for villagers, and then. Uh, then uh, six on food to sustain the knights. Still only spearman for Schmulzi here. Pikeman 30 seconds away. So if Marz gets a good dive here in on the spearman, that uh, should uh, complicate things a bit for Schmulzi here as the spearman numbers are uh, diminishing rapidly before the pikeman upgrade here. That's a great fight for Marz here. And uh, now pop capped or uh, housed at 55. And, yeah, and that's the GG point right before Pikeman. Great engagement there, even underneath TC Fire. My girl's proving strong for Chaos Pit as well. And Marz looking strong so far this game. We'll have a look at the stats and just pull up the next one as well. So scouts and spears right the military population here in the start and then so watchers investment from the Celts not really paying off just essentially just delaying that castle age so uh, Schmaltzy fell quite a bit behind in the progression there Eco's not that dissimilar but uh, the overall military situation the KD just dominating here for Marz great engagement against the spearmen before the pikeman upgrade kicks in there Let's have a look at the third game here and see if uh, Mr. Schmulze can pull off the reverse sweep here. Looks like we'll have Frank's Tatars next. And here we go. Tatars for Marz here, that's actually a pretty decent uh, eco bonus for the Dark Age here, given that there are six water buffaloes. It means uh, the 900 food turns into 1350 food total because of the 50% um, extra food given Tatars from Herdables. Schmutzi, uh, on the other hand, with the Franks here, and gets to collect the various 15% faster, which is always a useful bonus for the Franks in the Dark Age, when the, which is when you usually collect the various. As far as Scout Wars go, you could favor Franks in the beginning if they want to go for the Scouts here, both of them. Then um, Franks have an advantage with their 20% more hit points until Bloodlines is researched when the civilization that has Bloodlines will, will come out on top with more hit points, 54 total. 
No way, dude. Sixty-five total to the Franks fifty-four. I mean, little bit of damage taken there, but they're both preserving the scouts to be able to push the deer and uh, potentially take on a scout for later. Ooh, keeping the water buffalo far out here. Is this a debate from uh, from Mats here? Is Mats expecting Smoltzi to try the same thing again? And is it's a cheap way to try and take out the enemy scouts here? So really far out. <laughs> I think Mats is afraid that the builders will start eating several buffaloes at the, uh, at the same time. So, but he has the better HP on the scouts. Oh, oh more HP lost by Schmutzi here. Dancing around seems a bit scary. Probably looking for these buffalo, buffalo, buffaloes. And now going to try to lure Mats into the TC at home base, but that's not going to work out. Blow house is going up here. So neither player should be needing to fear men at arms this game, as uh, as uh, there won't be any uh, any gold access here. Until we break through the woodlands, that is. I can see how Shmulzi would uh, want to move in and try and snag uh, water buffaloes though, because of that Tatar's Modus is uh, providing them, providing them with a lots of lots of extra food in the early stages of the game. That uh, should, of course, be attempted to be obstructed. Sixteen pop for both of them. Idle decent time at an absolute minimum. That's the perks of having these dark age eco bonuses as well. Makes it a lot easier to keep the TCs pumping at all times. Neither player are picking Lithuanians as well, uh, either, so I assume Lithuanians may have been banned for this one. Bulgarians, a pretty obvious ban as well with the instant swordsman line upgrades, uh, making it easy for them to go men at arms into towers and later on benefit for the stone for the uh, crep posts and castles. So. Bulgarians an obvious ban for Chaos Pit, if you ask me. But this is Tatar's Franks. Also moving out now will actually, could actually take out one villager here since uh, Loom isn't in quite yet, but uh, there it kicks in just now. So, Marts is just fine. They're clicking 20 pop up here, whereas Schmutzi looks to be going up at A22 here with the Franks. Will be a second lobby camp here, or oh, just a small wall off like the previous games. Good preemptive measure to keep any enemy scouts or other kind of aggression out. Probably has towers in mind here as well, since the walls go out this far. This seems a bit greedy at this point, though. But it's uh, 40 seconds away from the uh, field ledge and will be pumping out the scouts, I can only presume. So he barely even got to the berries yet. There's still another water buffalo to be eaten here as uh, two of them are being drained. The barracks is up for months. Heck, this could even be stable blacksmith or double stable scouts here from the uh, from the Tatars. Let's see. First table going up. Schmolzi could temporarily de delay that a little bit, but it's also dangerously close to TC. Does not risk it. Okay. Nice reaction from Bart Stenner as well, then garrisoning the TC just in case Schmolzi tries to uh, get in the way of it here. It is a 25 population up here for Schmolzi with the Franks. And uh, can only speculate as to what the plan is here, but probably spearman defense. 
uh, to protect the food income from the berries and maybe see the few farms and then get to the gold in the back and the stones maybe to to counterplay Mats's um, village scout here with a pseudo fast castle with the with the Franks here and that, that, that might very well work out if Schmutzi gets the walls up here because then you just need maybe two or three spears at the berries here and uh, or small walls for that matter this could be fought off by villagers There's the field ledge for Schmolzi as well. Mats probably shaking his head now. Why is he going up to field ledge at 25? Pop here with the Franks. Is he going straight past castle? Where the hell is he getting the gold for that? And the answer could be selling the stone, of course, because if you sell 200 stone with the 50 gold in the back, you should be able to afford the castle ledge that way without mining any extra gold. Not even. Oh, he's, so, he's not dropping off! It's so cramped here. Oh, that's wasting precious time here for Schmolzi. Oh, yo, yo, that bumping there. Yeah, he notices. He pulls the villager away and now needs to task one of the villagers to take this one as well. Oh, that really delays the uh, progression towards the edge here. However, uh, Marz isn't really there yet either. But Marz is committing to army here, to feudal age armies. And while Schmolzi is dropping the market, will be selling the stone for sure now. And just waiting for that last bit of food to allow for, uh, for uh, gas leach to be researched. Both buildings in place here. One a very short patrol for the <laughs> scout over here. And uh, we hit Barrow! No! Okay, so it's, it's going to be a, a prolonged feud late here for both players. Wheel Barrow, of course, benefiting cars, but there are only five farms here. I can't help but think that uh, Schmolzi would be better off uh, selling the stone and going straight for the castle age over wheelbarrow here, getting some knights out to shred the scouts or just deal um, extensive damage against the Tatars here. Of course it's difficult to engage against the Tatars here, because any unit will get bonus damage from the hill and these... It's not very clear on the terrain here, but uh, as you can see on the minimap there are some edges all along the way here, like... Uh, small elevations so the Tatars could make use of that for any kind of unit to gain an extra 25% 20, bonus damage from the elevation. Our scouts getting a hit there, but only one kill for either player. No eco kills whatsoever. Scouts going down doesn't really matter. Castle Age is on the way. Mart has the attack upgrade in. No bloodlines yet for the scouts. It's going to be the uh, Cav Archer's follow up, maybe here. That actually makes more sense against the Franks. Uh, because the Franks, Knights will trying to. Franks, Knights will struggle to keep up with the speed of the Cav Archers. We have a defense working out for Schmolzi for now, but what's the follow-up here from Marz? Skirmishers against the Spears, I presume. Still not on gold. And, uh, 
<laughs> has to move around a bit here to get to it actually. And look at the Franks player. Franks, cheaper castles. Schmutzi has been collecting stone here for a while and wants to drop a castle right in the face of Schmutzi, however. Uh, oh, Marz, I mean. Schmutzi wants to castle drop Marz, but uh, uh, the scouts and skirmishers want to have a say in that, and this is going to result in quite a few builders lost for Schmutzi here. And uh, still attempting that castle. I love it. We are going to drop that castle, guys. Let's go. Let's go. It's two spearmen to protect. This is the YOLO play I've been looking for. Uh, but it's going to cost lots of builders' lives. Five builders killed by Marz now. Schmutz is down to zero, and this has to be a hit to the morale of the blue player if this castle doesn't complete. And there are a few more builders being sent in here. But look at Marz's armies just diving in here. The GG is uh, hopefully called after the resign. Uh, but uh, regardless, I'm going to call it for them. GG well played. And Marz actually takes the 3-0 here in the best of five final. Uh, not really spotting in the obvious. I mean, Schmultzi, yes, slightly higher RLT's time. But uh, Schmultzi were was also, I believe, uh, top seed in this... Uh, mini tournament so uh, i don't think it's so much the skill difference here as it's more about fa familiarity with the map and uh creative picking of civilizations yeah thanks for joining in much uh, there will be more of these small tournaments i'm hoping to run more mini tournaments throughout the summer just like keep them running for every week or every second week in the summer with different maps to sign up for so should be Something for every taste, so be on the lookout in the Discord. And that's it, 3-0 for Marz. In the Chaos Pit 1400 ELO Max mini event.